Today we've got some crazy stories of squatters. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today we discuss people who show up and take residence in places that they don't belong and they have no business being there, AKA squatters. I don't, do you know why they're called squatters? Because when they move into places they're not supposed to be, they're always in a squatting position. Like a triple threat position. Well, it's, or like a pooping position. No. Oh. Because. People who take over residences poop a lot? I don't think that has anything. Not any more than normal people. But yeah, I think so it's you that don't know. they're ready to dash away at any okay. moment. There's I, probably a real reason and you'll tell us in the comments. Thank you honestly, preemptively. I do not know, but um, we've still got some some cool squatter stories. Buckle up, people. <laughs> we sure do, okay. This squat, first one. Squ pop a squat and listen up. <laughs> This, don't take a knee, Papa Squat. <laughs> this first one begins in our home of North Carolina and back in the year 2000, we were still in it, North Carolina back then, remember those days? 2000. It was awesome. The new millennium, everybody thought the world was gonna end, but it didn't, it here didn't. we are. Spoiler alert, didn't happen. A uh, man named Jeffrey Allen decided, um, well, he decided to commit some crimes and he was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Well, he doesn't look like a criminal, I mean, look at that face. For a string of robberies, uh, garnering himself the nickname, The Roof Man because he would go to fast food establishments, most often uh, McDonald's or McDonald's as he probably described it, and uh, drill his way through the roof and then rob that sucker. Okay. And, uh, 45 years in prison. That, so, that's pretty smart, that's like Mission Impossible stuff. Well, you just wait, keep up with Jeffrey Allen for a second. Okay. He gets arrested, he gets thrown in prison, he escapes from prison on the underside of a truck Talk, speak of Mission Impossible, he does the thing that you only see in movies, he actually did it, he was on the underside of the truck, he escapes. He gets all his ideas from movies. And then he says, you know what I'm gonna do, bro? I'm gonna go to the Toys R Us <laughs> and live there. <laughs> <laughs> really? So he goes to the Toys R Us in Charlotte during the holiday season, he finds a cubby hole under the bike rack, he gets in there and then he tunnels his way to the abandoned Circuit City, even back in 2000, Circuit City was on its last leg, I miss Circuit City just a little bit. He didn't go through the roof? He goes he goes through the wall, gets into Circuit City, and then he builds himself a cubicle out of sheetrock under a stairwell, ends up painting the walls of this thing, he hangs up posters, he sets up action figures that he got from Toys R Us, he installs a smoke detector, and he runs a water line from Toys R Us, sets up a TV DVD player where he watches Spider-Man 2 over and over again. <laughs> the, Thank you, Jeffrey Allen, for being a person. This guy's smart. I love the fact that- This guy shouldn't be in prison. This guy should be the president. I love, well, <laughs> I love the fact that he, he set up a smoke detector. It's like, he was like, you know, if I'm gonna go through trouble putting up sheetrock walls and watch Spider-Man 2 all the time, I gotta make sure this place doesn't burn right, down. That's right, you just heat like, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, he spends his night racing uh, remote control cars uh, from the Toys R Us and he rides the bikes this around the stores for exercise. True. He eats the baby food because the only food you get at Toys R Us is baby, baby food. food. And he has a, a baby monitor set up to monitor what's going on in the Toys R Us from the Circuit City. Anyway. He's so smart. It, one night he's trying to rob the Toys R Us and they they see him doing it, and he f goes into the Circuit City. And how can just, you rob your own house? I don't know. And then they you can't they, rob they, your they own arrested house. Arrested him in Circuit City in his little cubby thing. Oh come on, dude. Too bad. Did he sleep? I would have like, come and visited you as a guest. Like old DVDs were like as a bed. I know none of those details, Link. Uh, in 2004, there was a radio ad for Providence Place Mall in Rhode Island, and the way that they chose to promote the mall was they they said that. It's, a, it's such a great place, they have everything you need, you could live there. Ah, ha <laughs> ha. That was a mistake because they inspired Michael Townsend to do just that. Right. And for some reason, Michael um, was observing the construction of said mall from like earlier, and he knew that there was a certain area, a large unused storage area. One of those voids. That was like a void you that was hidden find in like the, void, the weird, the weird way that the mall was made. Squatters can find voids. I've always known that. So it's cool that this guy like observed it and then like made a mental note. So then once the ad came on, it like popped into his head. It's like you know what? I can live there, and I know exactly where I to do it. I should live there. In it the was void. a it was a seven hundred and fifty square foot. It's quite a void. Little void in there. Big, big void. void. And it, here's how you would get to it. You would enter a passageway, it was like a creep, 
creepy, dark, two foot wide space where like you'd walk down through there and then the ceiling would change height, but the walls would be really close. You know you're getting to something good when that starts yeah. happening. And then all of a sudden one side just dropped off into like a dark void, void, a chasm. Yeah. So like you're you're like shimming along on a ledge now. Yeah. And then you go up this metal ladder. It's like a movie. Into your home. I love it. Can I live there? And he, not only did he find this place, like he and some artist friends of his kind of made it into an installation. Oh, of course they did. And uh, the cool thing did was. Did they watch Spider-Man too? No, but they took two tons worth of furnishings up through this maze. I'm talking couches, bed, sofa chairs, dining room, a china hutch filled with dishes and cups. They were filling that void. <laughs> a TV and of course a PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. So all in the name of art. Yeah. You gotta have your PlayStation 2 if you wanna have an art installation. Yeah, yeah. Um, had no electricity, no plumbing, but the mall had bathrooms. You just had to shimmy your way down through the through the chasm. This is like when you go in the back of the store, you know, when you enter the mall from the back and you feel like you're, oh, security doesn't You remember see at me. Cary Town Center? Cary we, Town Center, We yes. went there so much, we would know like the secret. The voids. The, the back ways in, yeah. like the we didn't, we employee didn't tunnels. There. We didn't live there. But we, we should I, have. I thought about it. What happened to these people? Um, they said they were gonna stay there for about a week, but then they ended up staying, kinda like as a vacation home, they would go in for like three weeks oh, sure. at a time for four years. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty awesome. They pulled this thing off for four years, but then one day, uh, while exiting the secret abode, a security guard uh, called Michael and was like, Wait, what are you doing? What are you, where are you coming from? He's like, well, my house I've been li living in as a vacation home they for four months. Out. I mean, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So he was he was he was kicked out. Mm -hmm. How about the guy who lived at the AOL offices for two months unnoticed? There was a guy named Eric Corporate Simmons. Squatter. Back in 2012, he was 19 years old. He was a part of a program for tech visionaries that uh, they were going to develop different software and stuff. They were being financed by AOL, and they were there for a four month program. But he was developing software for teachers to make better lesson plans for students. After the four month program, he decides, ah, you know what? I got my security badge. Maybe I'll just stay here. And he did. He like stayed, lived there. He lived there at the offices. He would sleep on couches. He, he noticed that security wouldn't patrol certain areas, so he slept on couches during the day. He walked around with his badge during the day. Uh, slept at night. Walked around during the day with his badge. He ate from the commissary there. He used the company gym to shower, and then he, he, he continued to work on his software oh, for the next two. He months. worked on his own thing. Yeah, he did. He continued to work on this lesson plan software. See, if he'd have worked on AOL stuff, like. Figuring out how to send more discs to people's homes. You remember when they well, used to do that? Well, that was 2012. Yeah. So they were the, the discs beyond that. The discs were over. They probably had them oh, up yeah. as decoration all over the place. Anyway, uh, he's been there for two months, and a building manager sees him sleeping on a couch at a certain time, and he starts looking at him, and he he, he revokes his badge, and he has to leave. But he ends up getting a fifty thousand dollar investment that he used to rent a house, and later release the software that he had worked on illegally at OAL. So a, or AOL, whatever the name of the company is. So congratulations, Eric. You, you you made it work for you, corporate squatter. All right, I got, now, now there's plenty of creepy squatters, so I'm gonna go into like stalker creepy territory here. Uh, August 2013, there was a dude who was like really in love with Jennifer Lopez. Uh, really? Police were called to J-Lo's home, which is a $10 million mansion in Southampton, New York. Turns out a man named John M. Dubas, Good looking guy. Oh, Dubas. This is his mugshot. Hey, Dubas, uh, what you been up to? Uh, well, what he's been up to is living in her pool house for six days, just blending into like this three acre estate. He just walked in Pretty there. Pretty easy to do. Neighbors saw him, like security guards, everybody saw him, but you know, here's how he did it. Here's some things to note. One, he walked around the grounds like he owned the place. Yeah, yeah, you gotta look that way. It's all about the look on your face. Anytime you're doing something wrong, you gotta look like you're doing something right. Two, he did some housework. Remember that, kids. He, he started cleaning up the grounds and there was a path that was cluttered. He like got stuff off the path. Yeah, do so your I, part. Oh, you, got, you gotta pull your weight. Yes, and, Jay Lowe would appreciate and, that. And three, this is key, uh, constantly take pictures and post them on Facebook under a pseudonym, David A. Lopez. I think, whoa. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, uh, he posted one picture of him chewing on a heart-shaped box, look at this, and the caption said, Jenny always sending me love. Oh, yeah, nice, David. He made one mistake, though. He was caught lurking around the back porch. You can't be doing oh, lurking. Oh, lurking if is If you're gonna be by a back porch, you gotta be cleaning stuff up. Security confronted him. He said he was J-Lo's husband. They called yeah. the cops. He told the cops that he was the father of her children, and she told him to live in the pool house. Uh, 
that didn't work. You gotta have a stronger story than that. Like, I'm here to clean up a little bit. Yeah. They're not paying me, I'm just standing It was good while it lasted, it got some good Instagram pics. I think the lesson that we've learned today is that squatting can be fun. Squatting can be a great thing. But, but it is illegal. You're gonna get caught, but you know what? Enjoy it while you can. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll, I guess, okay. I'm not gonna disagree even though I feel like I should for the safety of uh, humanity. Sure, Link disagrees. Thanks for liking and commenting. You know what time it is. Hi, I'm Asim from New Jersey and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. Did you know you can get the Rhett and Link bobbleheads? Yes. At link.com slash store. Uh, you can cut this package up a little bit. It's pretty easy and make a Good Mythical Morning set that you can place us on. It's just like having Good Mythical Morning in your own room. Mm -hmm. Click through to Good Mythical Morning. We got an amazing squatter story at P. Diddy's mansion. Interpretive dance. I think it's your turn to dance, son. <laughs> so I was like, you know, my name's Jeffrey Allen, and I'm gonna, I'm the roof man. Y'all know me, I'm the roof man. I drill into McDonald's and I steal nothing but fries and the patties. I just steal the patties and the fries. Oh, I've been caught. I'm being put in prison, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab on the bottom of this truck. It ain't like I ain't never done this kind of thing before. And I'm gonna mission impossible on my way right into the Toys R Us. Look at me watching Spider-Man by myself. I'm a squatter. I'm just a squatter. Sean Combs, AKA Puff Daddy, AKA Diddy, AKA Puff Diddy, AKA. That's not one of them. It's P. Diddy. Diddy Noodles. 